Welcome to Life Without Limits, where there are no limits to what you can achieve. My name is Joan Kaler, and I am your host. The information in this podcast is not a substitute for counseling or medical advice. The information is meant to inspire and educate listeners, but not guarantee anything of any kind. For more information on my services, please go to joankaler.com. Thank you. Enjoy the show. Welcome in, everyone, to Life Without Limits, where there are no limits to what you can achieve, truly. I'm Joan Kaler. I'm your host. I'm thrilled that you're with me. I am, and you know I say this every time, but I really mean it every time. I am so thrilled about this podcast today. All the ladies out there, okay, listen up. All the gentlemen out there, out there, Listen to to how you can support the woman in your life, because this podcast, I am with Stephanie Rafflerbach, right? Did I? Almost. Raffalock. It's it's phonetic, but it's spelled so weird that (laughs) it just gets garbled. (laughs) So I want to share already with you all. A beautiful quote from her website, which just brought me to tears. Okay. And you, we will visit her website during this podcast. But on one page on her resources, she quotes, or she writes, In the vision that I seek to manifest in this phase of my life, I stand for lifting other women up. I stand for supporting and encouraging women and their dreams. I stand for self-knowledge, which reveals us all things to us. Know yourself deeply and shine that light in the world. Ladies, shine your light. And then she quotes Carl Jung once said, the privilege of a lifetime is to become who you truly are. Oh, that touched my heart so much when I read that. I just thought, yes. All right. So that's the the tease to bring you all into this podcast to give you a sample of Stephanie's heart. Now I'm going to give you the, oh, this woman is so accomplished. Take a breath. Stephanie Raffalock is the author of Creatrix Rising. We're going to talk about her new book today, Creatrix Rising, Unlocking the Power of Midlife Women. She writes press in August 21, which means this book is going to come out, but you can definitely pre-order it. And we're going to talk about this today. She also penned the award-winning bestseller, A Delightful Little Book on Aging, of which we did another podcast together the first time I met Stephanie. Okay, Stephanie, I don't want to mess this up. A graduate of Naropa, did I say that correctly? Naropa University's program in writing and poetics. Stephanie was a contributor to the Rogue Valley Messenger in Oregon. She's blogged for Nexus Magazine, Omaha Lifestyles, Care2.com, as well as 60andMe.com. She is a former iHeart radio host. We have an expert here, ladies and gentlemen. She is now a popular guest on podcast. I'm so lucky to have her, where she inspires women to embrace the strength and passion of their personal story. So this is Miss Stephanie. Oh, my gosh. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Joan. <laughs> that was quite the intro. <laughs> Good morning. Here. Well, I wanted to give everyone not just of your accomplishments, but a piece of your heart. Mm. Oh, by the way, Stephanie also hails from Austin, Texas. Woo! So how are you all doing down there with the horrible storm that we had? Yeah. The storm has passed, and now it's a it's a very interesting lesson in um, Texas politics and what happens when you privatize a grid as opposed to federalize a grid. Um, there's a lot going on, and there are some changes that are going to have to be made. Mm-hmm. You know, these extreme winter events that used to be like the every 100 year storm aren't every 100 years anymore. You know right, the. Right, right. 
polar ice caps melt, the ocean temperature changes, it affects the jet stream, it affects the pressure, all of that. And so as a result, this winter, we had seven days of single digit temperatures. It was very tense because the houses here aren't built. Like, you know, my house in Colorado was built to withstand seven degree temperatures mm-hmm. for 10 days, no biggie. Yes. But here, that's not the case. And I don't know if Texas has, owns a snowplow. Oh so God. once the roads were snow and ice packed, no one could get anywhere. Trucks couldn't get to food stores. Um, power outages caused um, food stores to close down because they couldn't keep, you know, meat fresh. Um, There were all kinds of far reaching tentacles of this storm. And now people are digging out and there's, um, and I mean that metaphorically, the snow, the the snow is gone, Mm -hmm. but people are digging out and and trying to figure out what's next. Um, We're just looking at the stuff that we need to replant around our house and asking the question, do we get something that's more zero tolerant? So it's, it was a, it was a big deal. And uh, yes. Yeah. Well, we were all watching it around the country and just praying for you all. Hmm. It's just, oh, is is this possible what's happening down there? Because, of course, in the north where I live in Pennsylvania, I mean, this winter was the winter. I want to get to your book, but this winter was the winter from hell. Yeah. So I was digging out. I have a snow blower, a regular snow shovel, a garden spade to crack the ice. So we're experienced with this up here. We don't like it, but we're experienced with it. Right. And I was watching weather.com and I th- saw, okay, so the last week of February, it's going to be in the forties. And I said, everyone, the great meltdown is on its way. <laughs> and we are recording this on March 1st. And I don't care what the calendar says, even though the calendar says that spring isn't here until March 21st. As far as I'm concerned, spring starts today. I'm with That's you. It. I'm on that page. I'm, I'm, I'm done with this. <laughs> right. So what a way to start spring to talk with you. Mm-hmm. Stephanie, your book, Creatrix Rising, Supporting Women After 50. And this is, it's truly the year, in my humble opinion, of women. Yeah, there's been a, there's been a big lead up to this. When I when I look back at the 50 years, what happened in 50 years of my life from the time that I was 18 until now. It's amazing what I see. In 1974, the Fair Credit Act changed the fact that up until 1974, women couldn't get a bank loan or a credit card or buy a house without the signature of a male relative on the application. Oh. That's a big deal. Yes. Uh, uh, most colleges and universities really weren't interested in inviting women into their programs. You know, it once again, it was the 70s when Harvard and Yale relented to having women be part of their programs. And, you know, you fast forward a few years, I look at just even the last decade, how, um, first of all, there was, there was the Women's March in 2017. And oh my gosh, the sense of camaraderie, the sense of lifting each other up, the sense of uh, cooperation and working together. The result of that was that in 2018, the following year, more women over the age of 50 ran for local, state, and national office than ever before in our history. And on the heels of that, and this is a really big piece, we were dealing with the Harvey Weinsteins of the world and the hashtag me too movement. And the thing that was so vital about hashtag me too was that thousands of women realized that they weren't alone, that the dirty little secret they carried with them, you know, like boys will be boys was really much more widespread than we thought. And kind of breaking that open um, liberated us, I think, to, what we're seeing now, which is this, what, what I'm boldly declaring as an emerging archetype of who midlife women are. And, and for those of you who haven't nerded out on the archetypal thing, it simply means the arc of that which is typical, you know, so the qualities of something, it's not a being, it's the qualities of something. So the qualities of the creatrix, um, 
that's a word that literally means a woman who makes things. And if you open your eyes and you look in our world right now, what you see are women are making leadership. They're making art. They're running companies. They're making gardens. They are passing a light and a legacy to their daughters and granddaughters and nieces in a way that we never have had the opportunity to do before. So this is an amazing time. And all we have to do is name it and claim it. And I've named it Creatrix, which I I will say one more thing about Creatrix. Creatrix was one of the three Greek fates. There were three Greek fates, the spinner, the weaver, and the cutter. And when you look at the youth of your life, it, it kind of spins. You, you get the idea of like, you know, who am I? And you need to kind of individuate and break away from your family and, and find out who you are in the world. That is the spinning phase. And then the weaver, her name is Creatrix. She is the one that weaves things into whole cloth. And then, of course, the last phase, the cutter, because everything changes and ends. But uh, this, is a great, this is a great time for women. And I love that you used the, um, the quote about my jumping off point, which is this is a time for us not only to claim it within ourselves, but to look for ways that we can help other women rise up too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Which is why I love our collaboration so much. And yes. then in the last year, this horrible year of the pandemic, I did everything in my power to help raise women up politically. Right. So so excited that we have Kamala Harris as our vice president. Yes. Ah, So many fantastic women in politics. So many. And they are, you are going to see a change from that. We're already seeing a change from that, but Mm -hmm. we're going to see more change from that. Oh, from your lips. (laughs) Please. Yes. It's, it's our time. Well, I can remember because I grew up, um, let's say became conscious in the seventies so that God bless Helen Reddy. May she rest in peace. But her her song is the anthem of the seventies and Gloria Steinem and all the ladies. I can't remember all their names, but everyone who taught me, including my own mother. Yeah, that's, you know, that's a great point because I think that sometimes when we think about feminist history, we think about um, the suffragettes and we think about Gloria Steinem and and all of those things that were so important and so vital Mm -hmm. to the creation of our country. But what we sometimes don't think about is that everyone has that woman in her family, whether it was your mother or your grandmother, your great grandmother, Mm -hmm. who did something that no other woman up until that time in the family had done before. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, they paved a way for us. They paid a price for us. Um, My my own story around that is that I was raised by a mother single for, I mean, there was a guy in the picture, but my dad wasn't very present in in our lives. Um, But my mom worked in a time when women didn't work. And so one day she came home and she was running the collections department at a big sporting goods store. And she said, you know, they got me an assistant and I'm going to be able to do so much more now. It's going to be great. So I was really excited for her and I was proud of her. And then, I don't know, a couple of months later, she came home and she was in tears. She quit her job. I said, why did you quit your job? I was only 11 or 12 at the time. The idea of her quitting her job terrified me. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, I found out my assistant was making more money than I was. And her assistant was a, was a man. Uh And I said, well, what do you mean? That's not fair. You've been with them for five years. I I knew the sense of unfairness of of that, Mm -hmm. even at 11 or 12 years old. Mm -hmm. And I said, you have to tell them. And she said, oh, I went to my boss and I said, why is he making more money than I am? And the the boss said to her, well, he's got a family to support. And my mother said, so do I. Now, the only recourse that she had in the 1960s was to quit. 
She did so to preserve her dignity. There was no Lily Ledbetter Act. There was no talk about, you know, how women make 80 cents on the dollar to what men make. There was no conversation like that to be had. So that was her only recourse. Now, that's a little story that doesn't maybe carry a a whole lot of weight in the grand scheme of things, but Mm -hmm. I never forgot that. Yes, yes. I never forgot that there can be a sense of unfairness and that you just have to do what you can do. Mm-hmm. How wonderful of her to honor herself, to be authentic. Yeah. Sad that she had to do that, but she wasn't going to put up with that. No. And, and Joan, it's so often what courage looks like. You know, yeah. we, we have a series of, of movies out in the last 10 years that show strong, courageous comic book characters and they have like the gold wristbands and the gold <laughs> and and really what courage looks like is skin knees and baby barf on your shoulders. Yes, 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 it, yes. It doesn't have that a, always that attractive look or that look of having things so together. Sometimes it's just really taking a risk on believing in yourself and investing in yourself. And sometimes that's not pretty. <laughs> and you learn from that. Yep. Yeah. 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 My mother was in real estate, but in the 60s, again, right. my father was very, he was European and he was very not happy with her going out to show houses on the weekends or in the evenings. She was very good at what she did. So that produced some conflict in our house. But then when he passed, she went full force. And I watched her. I watched her succeed. I watched her start a business. I watched her uh, build something. And I, that taught me that I can do anything. So yeah, she, isn't that amazing? That like that family story is as important as anything that we read right. historically. Mm-hmm. Um, so I love that, and I and I love having you know hearing women tell their stories. And about how they're influenced and informed by the mother, the grandmother, the great grandmother. Yeah. It's good stuff. Because when she was growing up, I mean, back in, the, okay, so she was born 21 and 30s rolls around. What do you want to do? You could only be a teacher, a secretary, or a nurse. Those were your right. three choices. So she chose right. secretary. But uh, so we give thanks and are in gratitude to all the shoulders of the women that we stand on, yeah, including our mothers yeah, and our grandmothers and all those women who had the courage to stand and be and do so that here we are. In the, I'm going to proclaim, even if it's not nationally <laughs> proclaimed, the year of the woman, 2020, well, definitely 2021. Uh, you know, Forbes magazine just did... Um, the, a big uh, issue, 50 over 50, 50 women over the age of 50 years old that are CEOs, that are, are you know, government leaders, that are artists, that are mm-hmm. just astounding women. Well, as a therapist, uh, when I meet a woman over 50 and she thinks, oh, this is it. Or even I hear stories of women in their 60s. So young people will come in and they'll say, oh, my mother has this and my mother does this. She says life is over and she's not. Feel-. I say, how old is he? How is she? Oh, she's 62. She's 63. I go, what? And I feel so sad. Yeah. Or someone comes in and thinks that think that they're done with their life. There's nothing more they can achieve. And I go, no, 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 no. Let's rewind that and take a look at this. Because. Right. The- I think this is one of the most creative times of a woman's life. I think that once you get over that bridge, you know, that we call menopause, that Mm -hmm. spiritual psychological bridge, that the world opens up in creative ways that it wasn't open before. Absolutely. And there's a sense of, I think that we have a greater relationship with quietude than we do in younger days. And that that quiet informs us you know, that that's how self-knowledge is born and self-knowledge reveals all things is when, when we're able to sit in, in quiet with ourselves. And so I agree with you, like this, this is our time. And I think we should all be excited. 
I'm thrilled. And I am proud to say for anybody that doesn't already know this, I'm proud to say I'm 67. And I'm telling you, life gets more exciting every day, people. So wherever you are chronologically, it's what you're thinking in your mind and what you're feeling in your heart. Age means nothing. I'm telling you. And Stephanie's telling you too. I'm telling you too. <laughs> and I'm going to be 69 this year. So well, you look fantastic. Whoa. Yeah, I just smile a lot. So <laughs> you have a sparkle in your eyes. You know, so I love this part of my life. I love what I'm doing. I feel like mm -hmm. I worked a whole lifetime to get to the point where I could do what I wanted to do, which was to write books <sighs> and write articles and um, and address this idea of of feminism that has been such a part of my life. Mm -hmm. And finally have the freedom and the confidence to do that. You know, I mean, I, I think that we're in a confidence building stage really till, I don't know, maybe forever. I don't think you'd get it once. No. Then, you know, you have it. No. It's like, oh, I get how the game is played. And now moving forward, it's all smooth sailing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, confidence is something that we win and rewin over and over again. It changes. What satisfies us changes. Who we, how we see ourselves mm -hmm. and, and what we want to do in the world, all of that changes. And, and that's a big part of of these times too, is that I think women, you know, once they accept that creativity, they get to a point where it's like, they just don't care what other people think. I know. They're just going to kind of go for it. I'm thinking, when did that thought come into my mind? When I was 59, when I was 60, I want to lead with kindness and with my heart, but truly I don't give a gosh darn if, right. what, yeah, whatever decision I think is best for someone or best for myself, I go with it. And I don't give a gosh darn what anybody thinks. Right. It's so far, it seems to be working. Oh, good. <laughs> I want to share with everyone. First, I want to share with everyone your fantastic website. So I'm going to pull it up here and then share it. Dun, 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 dun. Cause that's one of the fun things that I like to do. Share, share, share. Okay, coming back down here, going to share, going to Stephanie. Here we go, folks. <laughs> here she is. Oh, so beautiful. Byline-Stephanie.com. Okay. And then scrolling down. So many wonderful tabs on this. Just so many places to go podcasting books here's creatrix rising and i'm yeah, going to you know yeah. you all i'm going to show you the link on amazon for this so just let me know unlocking the power of midlife women oh i just get chills when i look at this <laughs> Woo! people uh, okay we're going to amazon right now that's it i can't take this anymore <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see here. Do I have there we go. Stephanie, did that come through? Am I still sharing? Yeah, it okay. is. And I can see it. And I'm I'm always sort of amazed that they they put their books up so early. I don't know if the, I guess the paperback is up, but I don't know what's being offered right now if it's just the Kindle and the okay. hardback. I'm not okay. sure. This hardcover, August of 2020, pre-order price guarantee. Blah. Okay. So we've got that. So everyone, you can, oh, here we go, duh. Let me just move my screen over. So hardcover, here's paperback, 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 paperback. Okay, that also says August 2021 and the Kindle version. I mean, Stephanie rocks. She's got it going on, people. So can they get the Kindle right now or? No, they won't release the Kindle or anything until the publication date. Okay, okay. But all forms, folks, all forms. Yeah. What a marvelous, marvelous journey. I think this would be such a powerful book, not only for women who are enjoying the special time of their lives, but for women who are in any kind of doubt about themselves, any kind of wondering, can I really do this? 
Well, here's the thing about this book is like, I do talk about the emerging archetype. I talk about the history of women, but I share many of my own stories, which are like, you know, I'm not, I'm not a theologian. I'm not a sociologist. I'm not an anthropologist. I'm kind of like a regular woman. And in fact, that's the the RW behind my name means regular woman. (laughs) So I've shared just my stories, which are my process. And the reason I've done that is I want other women to know that I want them to be inspired, that they have a story that also shows the arc of their life. And, you know, we can rewrite the ending to our story at any time. Yeah. It doesn't have to be like what it was last week. Mm -hmm. it can be something new. So the idea of this book is that you pick it up and you get inspired. It's like, oh my gosh, she tells this story about when she was 22 and how confused she was. And like, and I felt like that. And here's my story. And women, when there's something very special, when we share our stories with each other, there's something kind of magical that happens. First of all, we feel more connected. Right. Um, But second of all, it, it's always a learning process. When I hear another woman's story, like hearing about your mom being the real estate person, and I think, God, it's almost like a foreshadowing. You know, she lost her husband probably earlier than she would have liked, and yet she was prepared. She had a job. She knew how she was going to get by in the world. And now she just kind of, you know, unleashed the hounds, so to, <laughs> so to speak, um, and did it on a much larger scale. And how that must have informed your own life and who you became. Well, I knew that I could always survive. Right. Through a loss. What powerful information is that, is to know that you can always survive. Right. Of course, I knew it internally and intuitively because there was no way that I had that wisdom and those skills back there. I think life is such a journey as it ebbs and flows. And then the wisdom that we gain, if anything, someone the other day asked me, what do you want to achieve in the next 10 years? I said, well, I want to grow in kindness and I want to grow in wisdom. Yeah. Those are two good choices. (laughs) (laughs) Well, one of the, I'm a very type A personality. I'm a fire sign. I'm a Leo. And it's like, all right, let's get this done. Da, 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 da. Okay, what do we got to do? Blah, blah, blah. And what I'm hearing now is take a breath, slow down, <laughs> and start to enjoy some of what you've built. Yeah, I'm going through a little bit of that process myself. Um, I, of course, I'm a type A personality too. I love other women who are type A personalities, <laughs> but I've I've come to a place where it's like, I just have to reprioritize mm-hmm. because the my energy has changed. It's not that it's left me, but it's different than it was when I was 30 and could burn the candle at both ends. Mm-hmm. And um, also life requires at this stage, like I said, that quietude, that sense of, of self-knowledge that only comes, reflection only comes when we can sit still for a moment. Yes. So my question is, can you have a little bit of both? Can you sit on the back porch in the morning with your tea Mm -hmm. and watch the clouds roll in, Mm -hmm. feel a sense of quiet and deep breathing? And then can you come in and really get a lot done during (laughs) your day? (laughs) Yes. It's a little cool on my back porch at this moment. So I'll put my coat on when I go out to my back porch. But I love sitting out on my balcony. I overlook a golf course and beautiful trees. Mm -hmm. I love going out there and being grateful for the moment connecting with God, connecting with divine love, and then coming in and saying, okay, I've got to get ready for this podcast. Let me get going here and make sure I know what I'm talking about, get everything set up. I'm so excited about seeing Stephanie again. So yeah, I can get there, get the, get the momentum moving, but I'm learning how to slow down as well. So yeah. a little bit, it's, a little um, bit of both. it works. It works. A little more effort sometimes for us. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Oh, gosh. 
I am so excited about your book. I am so excited. Please, everyone who's listening and watching, please, please, please support Stephanie. She is so talented. She is so warm. She speaks from her heart. Oh, my gosh. That's why she was a podcast person at iHeartRadio. Oh, I'm just so thrilled. Keep writing so I can keep having you on my podcast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there then. <laughs> but this is truly a gem. So when you're having your cup of tea out on your balcony, ladies, have Stephanie with you. Stephanie, is there anything else that you want to tell everybody? Oh, gosh, just that women are such wonderful creatures. And it's such a great time of life to be hit that midlife point and, and move into your 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s onward. There's great creativity. There's great juice in that. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a matter of the kind of creativity that makes things. It's, it's the lens of creativity through which we see the world so that we can always see the world as, we're, as being amazed, being amazed and curious and um, the, the holder of emotion um, I sometimes still hear women say they'll get teary eyed. You know, they'll say, Oh, I'm sorry. You know, like they want to apologize for the tears. And I, and I've thought recently, why do we do that? It's like, there, there's a lot to cry for in this yeah. world right yeah. now. And as women, part of what we bring to the world is we bring the container that holds the emotions. So our tears our passion, our joy, all of those things, if we can just bring them into the light without apology. Um, I watch um, a woman named Nicole Wallace on the news sometimes in the afternoon, and she has a, a little 10-minute segment at the end of every show where she talks about the lives that were lost to coronavirus. And, and I love that segment of the show because, you know, now these people aren't just, it's not just a statistic. It's right. not just a number. Right. These people had families, they had siblings, they had children, they had a life and they were loved. And, and every day when I see her do this, she gets a little teary, some days more than others. And I think how appropriate that she would model for us that these people deserve our tears, that this virus and what all of us have experienced in this time, that deserves our tears. So women in midlife, as they go into that phase of, I don't really care what other people think of me, mm -hmm. have an opportunity to let their emotions show Absolutely. that that models for people that, um, what we need. I feel like the world needs to feel. And this is what women bring. We bring this sense of permission. Wow. Yep. Wow. I'm just giving this a moment because it is so profound and so wise. So for once in my life, I'm going to shut up. I want everybody to be in your moment. I want everybody to be in your cloud, in your field, as we say, in physics and in the world of tapping. I want everybody to feel your heart and feel your wisdom beautifully. Folks, it's been my joy and honor to be with Stephanie I hope you have enjoyed this podcast. Please share this with others. Please let them know what's possible. And if you have any questions, you know where to find me, joankaylor.com. I'm going to be listing all of Stephanie's information in the description on iTunes and on Facebook. And I'm she's going to be plastered on my social media. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you all for watching and listening. I am truly grateful for everyone who's out there. And for right now, I'm going to say, see you next time. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>